Happy Tuesday! Happy Daddy's back! Ta-da! <laughs> so happy to be sitting today. <laughs> I got vacation hair, don't care, no judging. <laughs> I even put on lipstick for today since I was sitting. And you look beautiful. Thank you. You guys, we are Studio R12 stencils. We are DIY, we are crafting. We are here to let you know how to do all kinds of techniques and answer questions. Yes. She's yeah. Carrie. I'm Carrie. I'm Patty. And that's Patty. Welcome. We are so happy to have you here. We go live every Tuesday on Facebook, YouTube, and now we are live streaming on Twitch as well, where you can watch live streams of pretty much anything you want to watch at all times of days. Super cool. Super cool. So we are on there as well now, and we are excited to be expanding. Speaking of expanding, we looked at our numbers on YouTube mm. today, and you guys, we are pretty close to hitting 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 is a big, big number. And we like, are already... When you start at zero, 10,000 yes. is a really big number. Yeah, ten, you know? It is. It yeah. is. When you think about all the all the people who've watched our videos yeah. and subscribed, it's really cool. But um, tell your friends about it. Tell yeah. your friends to f subscribe because once we get to 10,000, we are going to do a ginormous giveaway. Yeah, we're going to have some... we got to have a party for that one. That is a big deal. And the way that you guys can help, um, if you want to help us grow our channel, is give us thumbs up mm -hmm. if you like the quality, um, and give us comments because YouTube loves interaction. So anytime you can interact with what we're doing, you can also subscribe and you can also ring the bell. And so all of those things will get you um, interacting with us, and that makes YouTube happy, which gets us visible, which yes. means you don't necessarily have to tell your friend. You can just tell the next painter or crafter that clicks in. Yeah. Because that's how I judge videos. If somebody has 20 video watches or 20 subscribers, I might not always um, think that they're credible. You know, so True. it's the credibility True. factor that we're after, really. We want people to know that we're actually a resource that they can find when they're crafting. So. Agreed. Yay. Agreed. Speaking of YouTube, along with our Tuesday Lives, we also upload videos on Saturday. They're mm -hmm. more succinct. Normally, not the talky, talky, talky. Yeah, you answer questions. You're just stuff. gonna, you're yeah. just gonna sit down, and we're gonna tell you from start to finish how mm -hmm. to do a project. Last week, I did a project yes. on how to paint ombre using just one color, and it's, it was just something that we happened to run into when we mm -hmm. were doing a video a couple weeks ago on stencil basics and showing a one layer, two layer, and three layer, and then realized well, look at the huh. difference in those colors. Yeah. This is all the same color, so you can really make a difference with your pressure, mm -hmm. with your how many layers, how many coats, um, and all of that. So you can really get a, just a really soft effect. You can get something dreamy. And then if you add sanding through it, yep. it'll take it to a whole other place. Absolutely. So these are the nuances that we want to share with you. Yeah. So that you have control over your DIY and your painting. Absolutely. Well, so speaking fun. of um, succinct, we need to give Steve a pat on the back for this week's video because Patty is showing you the coolest. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> it's a dog leash holder, cat leash holder. You can do a hat holder, you can do a yeah. jacket holder, anything, but it's so this fun. This is just a fun, so we actually assemble this, show you how to paint. This is what you would call a di dimensional lumber project. So this is boards you can buy off of the hardware store shelves. Um, if you belong to, like if you, I think Home Depot does it, our little Odell's um, lumber store next door does it for us. So we can get them to cut this stuff down into sizes so I don't have to have one of those big scary drills, or not drills, chop saws. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you can build using screwdrivers, screws, hammer nails, which I used to attach these boards. But this is a fun project and we show you how to drop shadow and show you how to put it together and treat some of this as a rough lumber. So we show you all of that. And you could use any stencil on this. It doesn't have to be a dog leash holder. Yes, and um, with all the things, it was, I think Steve had three hours of video to go through. Don't worry, it's not, it's three, not three hours. hours. It's not even close, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, when you have uh, multiple coats of something like I painted, a black drop shadow and white paint over the top of it. You end up with a lot of repetitive stuff, um, hammering and nailing yes. multiple times, all of that kind of stuff. We show you all of the details, but we don't bore you with extra details. That's the goal, is to make it as succinct as possible. Yeah, yeah but Agreed. 
with as much information as possible. Absolutely. So. Um, okay, so today, today is Tuesday, May 9th, 2023, and today we are kind of starting our pet theme. So mm-hmm. we're going to do a pet project this weekend, but we're going to start a pet project or an anytime project, yeah. but we're we're on pet mode this week. Yeah. Um, Everybody needs a pet thing. So like when you think, what I think about when I'm stenciling is if I have a stencil for me, who else can I paint for? Because painting a project and giving it as a gift or think I thought of you in this world we live in today, I think we need to think of each other as often as possible. Yeah. And so if you know somebody has like a little wiener dog and they have all the toys and outfits and accessories, what a great gift, mm-hmm. you know, so perfect. And so, and then don't forget you can turn that thing this way as well. Yes, and Cinda said Dart's watching us again today. We love when Dart tunes in on Tuesdays. Love it. But um, yeah, so but that's the kind of thing I try to think of when I'm doing the pet mat. I think mm-hmm. we're going to feature that. Um, we did like an under the pet food um, floor protector, yeah. really. Um, and so you can do totally your um, stencil on that. And then today we're going to do a Dollar Tree um, treat jar and we're going to paint on glass which you guys have asked yes. for we've had a million several times. <laughs> questions about <laughs> yeah. glass so let's talk about some of the things we're going to do today today we are looking using our alphabet stencils so this is as patty calls it like the ultimate personalization tool yeah. so you can get these in several different sizes several different fonts and today they're all on sale and you don't have to have a coupon. They're just marked through. Cool. However, you might want to use a coupon to get our lettering tool for free mm-hmm. with any purchase. Yeah. And this is, it looks crazy. Um, there's a video. There's a video. It has several different arcs. So you can use our letters in the arcs. You can use them straight. It has spacing for you. And if you... <clears throat> buy anything and then add this to your cart, which I'll share the links, and use the code letters with an S, then this will be free. And it's a super cool tool. And this, we will not be using this today because we're painting with glass, but this on a sign, if you wanted to add Mary's classroom on a sign and make sure, oh gosh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen lettering jack up a project, you know, they, ran out of room. This has got centering lines. It's got all the tools that you'll need to never mess up again. And then when you use lettering stencils, you can be sure that your stencils are going to be the right sizes. You don't have to hand letter. I don't know. You guys, give me a show of hands if you've ever tried to hand letter anything. It's like the hardest thing. I I think it might be the hardest thing to do because you've got to plan ahead. You have to, if you're if you're freehanding, you have to use your own handwriting and then you have to hope that you don't push on your brush too hard somewhere because then you're gonna have to remove it and you're gonna have to fix your mistake. Um, it is difficult to get balance if you're just trying to freestyle. And so when you use a stencil, these are reusable um, for infinity. Um, a chef that I've been watching, he always says 17 years. So we'll just borrow 17 years today. <laughs> so for 17 years, you can reuse these. But um, honestly, if you take care of them, don't fold them, um, and you keep them clean, which you can clean them. There's a video on how to clean your stencils, and they come in sizes. So this is, I think, probably like 8x8 or 9x9, and then um, these start at 3 inches. And if you have a favorite font, then most of ours come in all the sizes. So you can get, so this is this kind of font. And there is a capitals page. There is the lowercase page, and on all of these sets, that's how they are. And then there's the numbers with the different symbols page. So that is what these come with. And if you have one, you're golden, unless you want a different font. But you don't have to have all of them in all the sizes. If you paint small, if you card make, um, if you mixed media, These things are absolutely a treasure, and then you have it, you can reuse it over and over and over Mm -hmm. again. Well, and we've used them on, um, we used them on books. We Mm -hmm. have used them on 
wrapping paper to yeah. write someone's name. Yeah, you it can just, write a message. You know, there's just a, a just endless ton of things. Well, and then you can mix and match it. If you have the Hello <laughs> Sunshine and you would want to put someone's name with it and put underneath it Gibbs, yeah. then you can mix your alphabet letters with any stencil. Yeah, yeah. So these work with any stencil and you can personalize anything mm -hmm. um, and they work on glass they work on wood they work on concrete they work on everything so stencils are just like universal love yeah, i just love, love them myself we have a lot of people raising their hands um saying that they uh oh they're, yeah it's very difficult very hard to do it'll make you cry yes it will I, i've cried like i have i have cried yes <laughs> and i never plan ahead so that means I'm like the worst planner a header unless I'm packing for a trip and then I do a really good job. But um, planning ahead for spacing and all of that. So today I'm gonna give you the lesson that you need because um, you're gonna get it from the worst, which means I need the most help. Yeah. And so I'm gonna give you the help tools, okay? And that is that is gonna be worth the, the price of admission the price today, of admission which is free. Today. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm ready, ready for this lesson when you are. Okay, so we're going to do a couple things. These two Dollar Tree um, items. Number one, we've got a Dollar Tree towel. You have seen this in many of our videos, and um, it is priceless. You want a towel that you haven't schmutzed with a ton of paint, because when you start getting hard paint grabs on them, you can scratch through your paint and do some of that. So. If you get all yucky on this, switch it out to the dog wiping the feet when it comes in the house towel and get a new one for $1.25. So like you just keep one that doesn't have a lot of stuff on it um, because that is the best. I've got this folded up. Usually I'll put it out flat so that I have a good place to keep my project. Um, in the other videos, we talk about other reasons why you would use this. Today we're going to use this to hold our project. So when you are doing something round, if I was doing it on um, a hard surface, it would be really difficult to keep it right there. So this is Dollar Tree. So this lid um, comes off, it just screws off, which I love about it. So we're gonna make it into a treat container for puppy. Okay, and um, we have to treat this glass just with a little bit of um, TLC. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our kitchen sink and we're gonna use some nice um, oil takeaway dish soap, Dawn dish soap or something like that. And you're gonna scrub it down and all the things. If you want your little um, stickers taken off, then go ahead and do that before you wash down and then wash it after, okay? And then when you do that, you're going to dry it. Um, when you're doing glass, you wanna use lint-free paper towels. So um, the blue Scott paper towels or the um, I think it's Scott also, um, they have the big box of them. And so then you'll dry everything and then let it just kind of finish air drying. And then once you've cleaned it, don't be touchy touching with the fingers because your fingers have oils on them. So you wanna make sure that you don't have the oil. So what I would do is I would have my gloves. You never see me use glove gloves these days. I always use them in baggy. Um, so it's kind of a gift from COVID, right? I don't have to waste money on these. But when I'm getting ready to manhandle my jar, then I really wanna make sure that I don't put fingerprints and grease back on the jar itself. Okay, and then I know I wanna make a treat jar and I know I'm gonna want a color on top. So I took this and I wiped this down with alcohol. Um, not the wine, I'm drinking that. And then I took, this is such a great product, you guys. Um, write this down. No, you're gonna want a can. Um, you can get it in clear, clear matte. You can get it in all kinds of colors, but this is um, Rust-Oleum, Painter's Touch, two times, Ultra Cover. It's a paint and a primer, and this is flat black. You want flat or matte because then you can paint over this so this will prime your surface so i've got shiny metal and i'm going to prime this with this and then i can paint my lid with my regular paints and i don't have to own i think these cans of spray paint in gallup ohio it's a little town 
more expensive here might be 10 bucks each, something like that. So they're expensive. So I want to just preserve them for prepping. And then I'll use my regular paints for the other. So when I do that, um, I want the mat so that I can paint over. And now we'll go show you this. I use just a paper, paper plate. And I did this approximately 20 minutes ago and super dry to the touch and looks great. So, but the paper plate made a nice little rim um, place to keep the sprays in. And if you um, have a bush, and that sounds really funny, but it really works. If you have a shrub or a bush or something, you can lay the paper plate on top of it. And then a couple of the little leaves will get a little bit of black on them, but you won't care because they'll fall off and then that'll be a thing. You're not, they're not gonna fall off because you sprayed them. <laughs> they're gonna fall off because of nature. Anyway, so that's how you prep your lid. And now let's glove up. Do we have any questions or comments? We do not right yet. We have um, people who are excited. Someone I said, want to know what's in your cup. That's what I want to know. I've painted flowers and such on glass, but I've never tried to stencil on glass. That was from Cindy. So we're excited yes. to be able to show this. And then we've also, if you guys haven't been on our Facebook page in the last day or so, we are in full garden mode. Here. so much it's planting weed you almost can't keep us on track yes for work. I, every conversation turns to gardening like, hey this is a pretty green oh did you see my my picture of my bok choy <laughs> and so patty yesterday brought in a ton of starts for us and we can't send you starts because our shipping department would probably like slash our tires. Quit. Yeah. They, they, our tires would be slashed <laughs> but we do have our garden markers for vegetables that I have an extra one on my desk that fits on the one inch paint stirs. And if you go comment on our Facebook page and tell us, you know, what's in your garden, it doesn't have to be vegetables, it could be flowers or yeah. it could be succulents or anything, comment there. You get entered to win the garden marker set. And if you post photos, you get extra entries. So Ooh. we have been loving seeing yeah. everyone's it's garden. It's so nice to see what you guys are doing. Yeah. Like, we're kind of in a, well, you guys are the same, right? We're all in our little um, computer box, mm -hmm. and but we're a community, and so it's so neat to see yeah. what each other are doing. It makes us more like friends. Yeah, agreed, and I shared, a, I shared a shot of my garden, but I have to update it because I added more stuff last night. Yeah. And then I also shared um, our first salad that we got out of the garden, so it's Love fun it. to be able to show those things. Love it. Okay, so now we're going to get into... How do you use a stencil and paint on glass? Now the paint I'm gonna be using today is Americana Gloss Enamels and Carrie will, oh hi, um, Carrie will put the link to that um, to DecoArt's website. Um, this paint is probably 20 years old. Um, it shook up and it came out, so we're gonna use it. Um, I don't do a lot of glass painting. Um, I've done some projects that have used it, um, so these are, Fairly unopened, so probably fairly undried up, but they do last. Paint in these little bottles lasts for a long time, 17 years, right? So anyway, but I didn't, I couldn't find my black. I really did want to have it be a black label, but I'm using just an evergreen. This is Hauser Dark Green, and that is the color I'm going to use today. But um, this is how I store my paints, and then on the ends of them, I have just one of those metal Costco rolling racks, and then I have all of these totes and bins, and then all of the glass paints go in one, all of the fabric paints go in another, um, all of, I'm trying to think, um, the metallics go in another, and so I've got all them divided up, and so that's the entire line that I have. And then some of these are transparent, these are gloss enamels, but they're all in the glass painting realm. That being said, um, if I, Stop pulling my hair out and put my glasses on. Um, this is good for wood, glass, ceramic. Um, so you can use this on many surfaces. It doesn't say metal, but um, if something is good for glass, I would think that you could do metal um, just because it's a slick surface, okay? And when you're prepping your um, lid, the rubbing alcohol, and then once your jar is dry, I'm gonna use this guy right here. So I'm gonna save what we're gonna do with that. I'm gonna use just rubbing alcohol and a regular paper towel. And I'll wet that liberally. 
And then we just go on there and we just want to take away any schmutz. I don't know how you smell, spell schmutz. <laughs> that ad definitely has an S-C-H. S-C-H-M-U-T-Z. Yeah, that's schmutz. what I was thinking, schmutz. Yeah. And then dry it back off and then let that air dry and then you will be ready to go. So that is your prep. It's super easy um, to do. And then how do you, so I'm not the planner girl, right? So this is like where, if you see me going a place, it's because I've learned the hard way. With our jar, we have a couple of features that we wanna note. Um, hang on, does this jar not have it? Yep, yeah, there it is. It was just reflecting the light. So we have a seam in this. This is $1.25 with a lid, with a rubberized plastic sealed lid. So you can't get a better deal than this. But you obviously, this has been assembled through some process, but it has a seam on both sides. So um, the seam on both sides is where you want to avoid. You don't want to put your art right through the middle of that seam. So we have to be aware of that. So, and I'll tell you why I know this, because when I was doing my prep, I absolutely went right through the middle of that seam. So you want to avoid the seam. You want to use, use some, some balance there. Okay, so what I did was I took my piece of paper plate, or piece of paper, and I cut a piece that was the size of my jar, and I'll show you what that looks like. So try not to wrinkle your um, paper up because it'll make it harder to seat. And then you get it where you want it, and you find your scissors. And then right below the shoulder, you want to say, that's where I'm gonna cut. And then you cut out, this is gonna be your line it up template. So this is one of those neat, neat, neat things right there. And then what I did, and I put my gloves on too early, if I struggle with tape because I put my gloves on Laugh with me, not at me. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, and just so you know, schmutz is a real word and it's in the dictionary. Nice! Okay, so we're going to put our tape on our paper. And the reason I do that is I want to use these as handles. Okay? So then when I put my paper inside, I'm going to just kind of give it a little hug my tape taping together here. I need applause for doing things like this on camera. <laughs> because, All three snaps. Yeah, snaps. Okay, so we want to be careful of our seams. And then we want to kind of put that in. And then once we get it flat, we just tape that side and then we get it balanced over here. Make sure we're kind of, oh, he's already taped down. You want that tape free so that you can make sure the whole thing is kind of pressed in. And then that gives you a nice little straight edge to put your stencil lettering on through the glass. That's the hardest part with glass is making sure you're straight. Okay, so that's our prep. Um, and Patty Reach just said, seriously, lime paper on the inside, brilliant. And we have a couple other people who said, great idea with the lime paper, awesome tip. Yeah, and that's because... All right, Not, so that's our lesson for today. See you guys. See ya. <laughs> Not planning girl over here. Okay, and then another thing that's really invaluable are these little um, paper tape measures. Um, I keep one in my purse. It came from Ikea, I think. Maybe TJ Maxx. I think my Ikea one broke. I've unfolded and folded it so many times. Um, it's super lightweight and thin, and you can use it for everything, and way lighter than a tape measure, okay? You can also, if you want it to be plenty plenty, you can measure from side to side. It wraps around things very nicely and you can get kind of a spacing difference. So if I wanted my treats to be absolutely in the middle of the seams, that is seven inches. So then I can be like right there and I'm gonna just keep it north. I could do a couple of things with that. I can go with, you could mark on glass with a wax marker, but I can give it just an indication. Um, those of you who are more particular, um, which I admire, by the way, because 
I don't have that gene. I have not got that gene at all. But um, those of you that have maybe a more particular way to mark something precisely, um, if you want to share that in the comments so that other people can learn from you, um, I'm going to show you the way I do it and then you guys can educate from there. I love the comments and then I'll learn as well, honestly. Okay, so then the next thing we have to address, we have to address our stencils. I wanted the nine inch size, okay? This is a big amount of thing to, and put it upside right, big amount of thing to be putting on the outside of a, a, a vase or a jar. And so with that much flop, it's gonna bend, it's gonna, it's gonna do all kinds of unmanageable things. So we have to make it more manageable. So in a way, I've created a little bit of a workaround that takes work. But what I did is I cut them into strips of letters. And then from the strips of letters, I cut out the ones that I want. And so I've got treats, we're gonna make dog treats. So I just kind of taped them on there. I'm leaving one space for my other T, which is that T, and I have to move him when I get down there. What this does is it tells me a couple of things. It tells me that my E is in the middle, so I can, is that true? No, the E is not in the middle. The space between the E and the A is in the middle. Um, so I wanna make sure that I'm starting where my tape is at that middle mark, so I'll put the E down first or the A down first or whatever. It also lets me see how long the word is by taping it together. And so I can just kind of lay this over and then I can see how the balance is. Can I read it? Does it go all the way around the jar? Do I need to switch to a smaller font? That's what that does. So it's just like a temporary placement. Okay, so now that I've temporary placemented it and the tape residue should not matter um, I can't imagine that this 3M product is going to bleed off onto your, your stuff. So now where the work is that we've made for ourselves is these are really close to the edges. So you have a really close little thing. So we can do a couple of things with that. And I really need to start with my E or my A. I'm going to do E because he's super flat. Okay, so he's really close. So I can do a couple of things with him. I can take tape. I'm just gonna line up a couple pieces of tape. This is gonna be a tapey, tapey thing. Um, and you can, I'm gonna use the jumbo dauber. So he's a big applicator. I could actually, you know, I'm saying that, and I could skinny up and just use the tip of the skinny one, um, the ink sweeper. Um, we have two of these left in stock, they're on order. We have a whole bunch of these guys. So just FYI, if you're wanting these, they are, this is available, this is not. Get these when you can, they're really hard to keep in, in stock. I don't know Well, what that I think is. that's kind of my fault. Normally when we get them in stock, I say, say hey, they're in stock, and then everybody runs and grabs them. And I think we did a sale on them within the last week, and there were people who had like 10 in their, yeah. like, you, you want a good, yeah. like a good half dozen of them. Okay, so now I'm taping on both sides of that stencil and I'm making myself a mask. Okay, and I'm also making something that will stick to my glass. Okay, so that's really important. I could use um, the stick and restick. Stick and stick and restick. This is great for making the back of your stencil stick and then restick. So it makes your stencil into a post-it note basically. Okay, so, but this glass paint, the gloss enamels, when you use it, stays a little bit sticky and tacky for a little bit longer than you're gonna want. Okay, so what that means is if you put something sticky like tape, so this lesson is gonna be not the complete thing because we're going to show you after the, the finished product, but um, if, you stick your tape over your fresh paint and then glass doesn't dry quickly because it's non-porous. If you do that, then you're gonna peel off the previously applied tape. So stick and restick or tape, both of these things will take your other, your other paint off. So be careful, you wanna be dried completely. Um, some back of the label caveats on this 
Um, you can use this and you can make it dishwasher safe by baking it and it has instructions on the back. You do not, this is not food safe. It's not toxic, but you don't want to eat it. That's what I think the label even says that I read it earlier. So that's a neat thing that you can make it that hard so that your glass is washable, you know, yeah. and if you can make, I've made wine glasses. Um, if you make wine glasses, you want to, you want to do a good half to three quarter inch drop so that your lip fits on it and you're not picking up your paint with your lips, right. you yeah. know, so always being aware that we're being yeah. safe practices. I do have a couple of mm -hmm. um, tips on the, the lining up. Yeah, um, yeah. Patty Yay. said, how about using graph paper on the inside? Well, that's a good idea. So that will give yeah. you some even like smaller lines to follow. And then Amy like said, oh. find the center of the paper on the inside and center where and, you oh, put mark it. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then mark an exact center. So then you'll know top, Yay. bottom, and left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's perfect. I love that tip. That is a great tip. Okay. So our E comes first. So we're going to be on that side of our lettering. And so we'll find kind of our center so we can go back to our little tape. And we can say we are from lip to base. We are three and a half inches. So that's going to be what the heck. Now i got to do math. That's not funny, you guys. Okay. So it's going to be two, one and three quarters. So I'm going to be right there about that middle line. But then I've got a big old giant E, so I'm going to drop it down. This is where I get into trouble, and this is why I failed math in school. I didn't really fail math. I did not excel at math. We'll say it that way. Okay, so we'll put our E where you ultimately want it. Make sure that we're on that line. Give yourself a little look-see to make sure we feel like we've got a lot of lines here, right? So we have a line there, we have a line there, we have a line there. So we have a lot of places to check. If you are on your line one place and then off of it another, then you probably have a little bit of a, a, a tilt. Yeah. Okay, and so then you do that guy. Now we do it both ways. Go in with our dauber, not wet. You do not want your dauber to be wet. If it's wet, then it is going to mush your paint right underneath and that is going to be a terrible thing yes and let's also while we're on the topic don't use soap on your daubers no. or your ink sweepers or yeah. your sponges so load the paint come over here and unload that paint you want it to be scant paint when you're doing it with glass paint especially okay and then um one other i feel like i'm doing like tip 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 um, but you're gonna know stuff when you get done so give us thumbs up for that one Anyway, but this is a straight-sided jar. If I did a canted jar, mm -hmm. something with an angle to it, it would be like even this amount of angle, you would have to, it's just got a little bit of taper, you would have to alter each of your letters to make them be straighter. It can be done, um, but it's easier if your jar is straight. Okay, so then we'll go talk our paint dry because that's what we do. And then I'm going to just gently stipple. You cannot use the dome stencil brushes for this. That does not work. Um, they will um, smoosh and whoosh and it'd be, pretend like you would be ice painting, ice skating. Now something that does happen, and I'm seeing it here, is I get a little bit of a bubble texture I don't want bubble texture, so I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna dry it off, and I'm gonna go right back over and burst some bubbles. So I'm flattening it out. Okay, and then we'll go over here, and I'll show you, let me dry that real quick, and then I'll come back and do the second coat. Okay, so now we can go on to the little tip like we talked about earlier. And I can whomp that over there. And then we do our second coat. You're probably gonna do, I'd say four coats. So it's just a process, but 
it's a permanent process. So it's a really great permanent. Um, when you get into some of your other um, mediums that you can use on glass, you can use a sticker. Um, you can use stickers tend to fray on the edges. You can use vinyl. Vinyl tends to peel. Mm -hmm. If you treat this permanently, then it's going to be a permanent thing. So if you're making grandma's cookie jar and you've got stencils for that, um, if you're doing that, then you want to make sure that you are you know, getting it on there so it is permanent. It is an heirloom. Yeah. If, if you will. Our friend Lori said, such good tips today. I have never stenciled on glass and I would have made a mess for sure. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> ask me how I know these tips. Um, you know, and I get myself in trouble because um, before when I had um, a painting workshop, I would, um, somebody would come in and they'd be like, oh, today I want to paint on glass. And I'd be like, sure and then we'd figure it out together so um and then there would always be a mess but one more coat of this okay we're going to do one more coat and we'll take a look at it and then I will finish this and we will post on Facebook. Yes. I think everyone's just really in awe today. Everyone's real quiet. But when you, when, if you guys have noticed when Patty is in like deep thought Explainy mode. Explainy pants like, mode. She, when she gets in there and she gets quiet, I think everyone gets quiet. quiet so like, what's, what's she going to do? What's happening? What's she going to do? Okay. A little bit more. I can tell when I have a lot of extra. Okay, so I'm going to use the back side to debubble. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, I think this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is, um, so notice the amount of dome mm -hmm. to that. This is less um, smooshy. And so mm -hmm. this has, a, this is a way more refined uh, applicator. And then this is what this is for, in my opinion. This is to make long skinny things happen, lettering. Yeah. This is great if you're doing lettering stencils Stringing because stripes, you can go boom, yeah. boom, boom. And two inches at a time versus, I love my domes, but look at the difference of that. Like this is an amazing applicator and this does this as well as this, but yeah. it does it skinny and two inches at a time. Yes. So it's time savey, mm -hmm. like, oh, so good. Okay, let's take a look at this. Peel. Don't leave your stencils on. So if this paint is this good at sticking to glass, imagine how good it's going to be joining glass and your stencil and your paint together. Don't wait till everything's cured to take your stencil away. Take it. The rule of stenciling is to take your stencil away as soon as you can. So never leave them on. That is always a bad idea. Got a little bleeding under. No. Okay. Do we have Q-tips in here? Ooh, I don't know if we do. No, if we do either. Oh. Do we oh, have Q-tips? Oh, look at in that! Here? There's a whole bunch. All right. So, in my brain, I'm going Y, and I think it was the first applicator. I think it was too juicy. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of rubbing alcohol and we are going to, these are those Q-tips that are made for correcting your makeup and so they're super pointy and so I'm going to go on here and this is why I get, I'm laughing, I get paid the big bucks because <laughs> I know how to fix things. So look at what's happening, the paint is fresh. I have a precise applicator and I can just go remove any blue bulls and the rest will cure and be hard and be fantastic. So if you're on glass, rubbing alcohol is your friend. Okay, super simple. Yay. Okay, Yay. so 
I say definitely this is the applicator for lettering and for doing on glass. I think that is definitely. Also, if you can use your stick and re-stick instead of only tape, this will keep all of the stencil down on there and that will make it way less able to bleed under. So those are some good tips on that. Well, and since we recently had a question on mm -hmm. it, I want you to answer it on this as well. Someone had messaged us and said that they'd used a repositionable adhesive. We mm. do not, we did not ask which one. Um, they had used one and it left residue on their surface. Okay. So um, explain to our friends what you would do if there was residue left on your surface. Yeah, and I want to actually talk about these gloves really quick. The reason that I don't like the nitrile gloves always is if your hands sweat at all, then they come out inside out. And if they do that, they're going to be a little bit wet, so you can let them dry, but you can put them the other way and then do the balloon trick. So that's a nice way I know, I think right? that's my favorite thing we've ever done on a live video. I hope Steve can clip that out for YouTube short. Anyway, so that's how you can flip them back in, but they, they tend to be a little bit um, moist inside if you sweat, so just put them someplace where they can get some air in there, then you can get them back on, okay? But if you have re-stick and re-stick or any kind of repositionable adhesive, on your board and you put it on your stencil and then you lay that over. Reasons why it can happen, um, number one is um, you, maybe you didn't let this dry, okay? Number two is maybe your paint wasn't dry yet. So that can be anything that's wet is gonna stick. So, um, and this is supposed to already be sticky and also if you apply it too heavy, so you can do a couple of thin coats with this, but if you apply a big chunk of it, it kind of never cures. So that can be a reason why that happens too, so. And you also mentioned maybe not using, don't use heat. Yeah, don't use your, don't like blow dry it and then put that on there. So like, those are like some really good tips. Like, so if I have repositionable and then like what I did with that E just then, mm -hmm. if I go over to my blow dryer and I've got that on there, it might transfer that. But if I was on glass, I know that this is probably gonna take it off. Um, I don't know that this will take it off on wood. I haven't tried doing that. That lid is not on there tight. So if you're on wood and you get residue, what do you do to remove it? Okay, so what you can do on there is you can try sanding just a little bit. You can try rubbing it, like a, almost like a sunburn. Um, you just try rubbing it and it'll ball up sometimes. Um, and then you can sand it and then like base around it and stuff. If you get a mess, I mean, let's talk really frank. Oh, I've got two more, three more things I wanna finish talking about this. But if you get a mess with your um, project um, and you've based it and you've stenciled and now you're doing something and you get the adhesive on there, like wherever you're at with your project, most stencil projects um, are not make it, break it, you can't start over. You can sand it with a sanding block. There's sand effects. Um, sand it with your sanding block and then rebase coat, do it one more time. Like, you know, you don't have to be done just because, like if you're in a hurry, sure I get it, but um, like you don't have to be. Yeah. You don't you have might to be, be perfect. sad, and that's okay. Yeah, if yeah. you've done a really beautiful background. And, yeah, yeah. That would be the only reason then, to be like super yes. sad. Yeah. Um, but I mean, everything that we do is fixable. Yeah, and then, in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, and then mostly like the the really pretty intricate backgrounds. I've got a couple on the ones out there. Um, we've got all of our projects in the other room, and I can think of the one that I did that was like the copper colored background that had like like a dreamy kind of look. I wouldn't want to redo that. Also, if you don't want to redo something, make sure maybe you have a side project that you're doing. So maybe you have the, um, the cardboard from the cereal boxes is such a great little project to do. So like I'm doing my pretty background project. Maybe I do it on the, on the cardboard at the same time or on another board and then I test my thing I'm not sure of yet. Um, it doesn't have to be this brand. I don't know what brand it was, but I test it over there and I see. So um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've got a couple things still and you want to go next door. So we're going to look at how we've, we're going to look at spacing and we're going to position that. And now I might be able to tape my A over here and then tape the top and the bottom and not tape on top of my E. So as you're building your letter going across, make sure that you're not taping on your pre-painted thing until you've heat set it a good, I think it says four days on that, um, on that jar. Like okay. it's a good long time. And then when you're ready to do your cute little lid, um, I'm gonna take this out of here. I want it just to be plain. This looks weird with the paper in it. So when you go and you want to make your cute little lid, so this was this color, now it's this color, and I could paint it any color that I wanted. I could, oh, it's a screw on it. Oh my God. <laughs> I want that thing to just, I did it three times today so far. I want that thing to just push down on top of there. So what you can do with these lids um, is you can dress them up. So you got your little wood bits. You can dress them up and make them into something a little fancier. Oh, that's cute. I know. And then you can, oh, wait, thank you. <laughs> then you can come over. Um, I want to point out this ribbon rack. Um, this is a magic thing. This is a shoe rack on wheels. And let me not tip it all over. So it's on wheels. It has dowels and um, it is tremendous. We were able to color code our ribbon. We have a whole video on how we did that. Mm -hmm. um, you need to take a look at that because you need it in your life if you have a ribbon collection like we did. Or yes. do. Oops. The next lesson I need to learn is how to keep a sharp pair of scissors in my craft room. <laughs> Jeez. We need to hide some over here. We so do. We just need to be like, regular. these are the fabric scissors. Do not touch these. So then you can take, when you do this, you can take your little piece of ribbon. You can glue it on there. You could put a little bow. I don't have this glued on yet, so we'll just pretend. Um, but you can totally dress that up. Oh, it's got the tape on it. So you could totally dress this up and tie a bow and use your glue gun and then totally dress the top of that up mm -hmm. so you don't have to be... Just like plain Jane. Yeah. Something you got from the store. You can Something make it, that you make it spend sweet. a dollar on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, do we have I any? Do have okay. a, I, have, I have a comment. So Glennis said, if you have done a really pretty background, put matte media over it to protect <gasps> Glennis, it. Glennis, I know this. Yes. yes. Such a great idea. So good. So you could spray it with Krylon 1311, do a couple of coats. Um, you can put matte varnish on top of it so you can continue painting. Mm -hmm. If you use a, oh, I love you, Glennis. That's such a good tip. Um, but if you use something um, that is shiny like a satin or a gloss, you won't be able to continue painting without sanding. So you made yourself a nonstick surface. Um, but yeah, the 1311 would be perfect. Do a couple coats each direction and then you keep going. You can lift it right off. Um, you can use the eraser, the click eraser trick, if you make a big mess out of something. Um, so that is perfect. Yes, so great good. idea. Yeah. And then Peg asked, so you need to remove the mistakes before it dries if you make... Um, I think with glass, you have some leverage. I think you have some time uh, because it's non-porous. So I could take a razor blade and go after that thing if I wanted to just start over. Mm -hmm. um, the This is going to take off hardened dried paint um so you have plenty of leeway um the best tool in your arsenal with that is these little pointy q-tips um i think we got these from amazon i already shared them. yes she's so good but yeah um they are i i they even have them i think it's sally's um but they're amazing if you so i know that with stencil painting we don't paint things like eyelashes and eyeballs and things like that on projects very often but in my past I did a lot of project painting that had painted details like that and my golly I can't tell you how many times I would you know have one of my eyeballs on this side and then I'd have my other eyeball on this side and it would be like no my teddy bear is cross-eyed so you'd have to have something so fine 
that you could get in there and just take off the eyeball part. Yeah. And these are perfect for that. So yeah. these are great for any little microscopic details you need to correct. All right. Um, Marie asked, what kind of spray do you use for chalk paint? Um, none, actually. Um, so I... Um, when we opened boardroom um, here in Gal Police, it's a like a cork and canvas, but with stencils and boards. Um, when we opened that, we put the entire wall like this size behind our cash register, and we painted it with black matte wall paint. And you don't even need chalk paint. Um, you could use, if you wanted to use something, the Krylon 1311 would work and still it's matte enough it would allow you to chalk on top of it, but I don't find that it's necessary. So you don't have to, you can, you know, if, so here's the caveat, right? We did a big calendar, right? Mm -hmm. So my friend Jessica came and she, she drew out the calendar and she drew out the details um, and did all of that. And then when we got the calendar grid where we wanted it, we cryloned over that detail so it wouldn't erase off so if you're making a chore chart with a chalkboard if you were making any of that kind of stuff you could keep your grid with the krylon and then you could put your next month put your details on erase it off without disturbing your grid we all have an old chalkboard calendar video okay yeah that's a good idea yeah so i can do that carrie is so good so um, thank you guys for your questions and thanks for thumbs up hearts. We heart you back and I missed you guys. It's been three weeks. I almost forgot how to paint. <sighs> 30 That's why years the last video in three, took three weeks. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't know. It was so funny. It takes one week per decade to forget how to paint. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I came in and I didn't have water and I didn't have a stencil and I didn't have paper towels. And I was like, well, who am I? Like, I don't even know who I am. All right, we're done. All right, we're done. Okay, guys, see you Tuesday, and thank you for joining us.